And we're live. What and we going? are indeed live. What's up, everybody? Hey, welcome, it's, welcome, uh, welcome. Hello. We're back. We're back with our uh, we're at, with our weekly live coin Q and A thing, the jig. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I have I have my YouTube on my phone because I'm going to share the uh, share the stream and it, you know the volume's pumped up. Um, <laughs> did, did I mean that? Sorry. Um, so how's everyone doing? Hope everyone's having a great night uh, as we talk shop on uh, what what you guys have uh, been sending our way. Uh, admittedly, we have a, uh, a very short list of coins we're going to talk about tonight. Um, and it might also actually represent, I, I kind of thought about it, Paula. Um, you know, we, we've had over 100 emails that came yeah. in. Uh, a fair amount of them, um, detail coins that that probably is damaged or probably had something that's really not on there, yeah. and um, the the five on cheek also is one that's, that's my, my my five on the cheek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the closest um, I've ever come to having one. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, uh, after after we talk about our uh, our four emails uh, for the night, we might actually. Uh, and I'll, if it's okay with everyone else, just kind of exploring, you know, um, uh, different, I guess, um, resources that we could use to uh, to determine whether or not we have a coin that is, uh, you know, something worth talking about, or if it's something that, you know, um, just the good old bears of wear and tear get, got to it, and you know, it's it's really not anything there. Um, you know, postman damage, you know, we, we allude to PMD all the time. You know, uh, maybe we'll do kind of like an official, you know, um, technical uh, definition of what that is. So that, that way you guys know. Um, sure. Not only we're seeing it on our email, it's totally fine, you know. Uh, for the most part, we, we respond to those, you know. And uh, if, if we seem a little curt or short or to the point about the, the subject, it, it's because it's something that we want to try and get you guys off of. Yeah. So that way you're not completely concentrating on that type of thing every t every time you find <clears> one. You know? um, it's so because we love you, man. We love we love you. We love and, you. you know, yeah. So sometimes love hurts in that way. But it does. Um, it does hurt. It does hurt. <laughs> it can't, like, wait, did, did this person just tell me I have crap? I you know. know. Nothing personal, yeah, but, but your coin is crap. What we don't want to do is um is to soften the blow to make you seem like you have something because that could lead to to a lot of other things it's going to lead to unfair you know direction of education um or you know it'll lead you to you know possibly wanting to sell it and then being under the belief that oh this person said i have this you know and then our name coming up like oh you know one of the people on the live coin q a said that i might have something and we don't do that we are incredibly direct um, you know, there's a number of us on here. They're all quite knowledgeable in, in most facets of numismatics. And, and we're going to tell you like it is, you know, no point in beating around the bush. We're not doing any and favors if we do. Absolutely that. not. You know, Address it and, and then move on. You yes. won't go anywhere. You won't go nowhere. I think we also do, you know, as good of a job as we can of hyping up the things that we do find that or people yeah. have found that are really good stuff so you know and even even minor stuff you know when we when we know that you are brand new and you're putting in the effort and you're you're <clears> sending us <throat> stuff that you're you know look at i found this dye chip and you're really excited about it we're going to go out of our way to to show it or encourage you um because everybody starts out with those little things I think, I think probably all of us like die chips or minor RPMs were like the first things that we found. Get super excited about it. And clash. And that, yeah, in. clash dies. That leads you to looking for other stuff and and training your eye to notice when something is different. 
Um, you know, we want, that's what we want you to do. We want you to train your eyes to be able to recognize when something isn't right, isn't normal. Stray Man, thank you for the $5 super, whatever that is. Stray Man, appreciate you. Very sweet. The stamp of approval, five bucks. Thank you. I'm going to give that a little like there. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, yeah, we'll definitely have time afterwards to take some questions and talk to you guys about stuff. So, if you have questions, um, think about them and as soon as we're done looking at the coins, we'll chit chat a bit. I don't have any new any news per well, se. Let's, let's say yeah. Happy Eclipse Day and Happy and Eclipse show of Day. hands if you watched it or if you didn't watch it. Happy you might Eclipse. go back and watch it. Raise your hands if you got stuck in traffic for three hours. Not me, man. Thank you, Indigo, for five dollars. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we did, I want to mention a little somber time here. We did lose a member of the community last week, John Howe, um, rest in peace. He was a huge supporter and lover of the coin community, man. That guy loved collecting coins and loved supporting the, the coin community, and he will be missed by many. Yeah. So, he was around quite a bit. A long time, yep. A long time. It's always, always sad. Um, when you have such a large family like this, though, it's inevitable that we're going to lose people. Um, and when, when it's my time and I go, I want you all to tell my family members to make sure that they take my phone and they send you all texts. I want like I want all of you guys to get a final text from me, even if it's not from me. Is that morbid? Maybe. Yeah, that's pretty morbid. <laughs> a little bit. I don't care. Paula's ghost is texting me. No. Oh, speaking of that, Adam, have you heard of? Oh, yeah, God. Farm Dog told me about it this morning. Did I missed the stream. Okay. The Jefferson Hotel. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, that's the Jefferson. Mm -hmm. You've been there? Never been there. I want to go though. That's yeah, I think that we're gonna go there when I go visit Ida. Oh, so well, that's too far. I won't be able to go. I know. I think we're gonna go there. It's gonna be fun. Ida said we might even stay at the Jefferson Hotel. We'll see. It's, it's a beautiful property. It's yeah. got that sounds like do you fun. like dolls and clowns, Paula? I do. Oh, then you'll love it. I do. I do like that. I like the old. Yeah, so if you go to the Carson City Mint, um, if you if you tour the museum, like right before you go where where Coin Press One is, um, there's a little hallway, and they have a display of like these weird dolls and stuff in there. It's really cool, but there's some creepy ones. Dolls can be creepy. They can be creepy. We used to it's have right by Arlington. Shut up, John Shank. Somebody to, time that guy out. <laughs> my, my daughter used to have a, a Dora the Explorer doll that when you pushed its foot, it would be like, you know, saying stuff to you, whatever. We took the Don't batteries out of that thing and it talked to us. Was it speaking Spanish? I was like, no, it wasn't. But <laughs> I was like, that thing's going in the attic. Never oh, my God. Very good. Has anyone ever been to the haunted clown hotel i think it's in like nevada or something i um actually drove right past it when i was on my west coast trip we didn't stop and i'm mad that we didn't stop because i want i should have stopped you should have yeah i used to spend a lot of time at the winchester mystery house growing oh, up oh that's a good one too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was like it was like 10 minutes from my house oh wow and we used to go to the, the movie theater that was right across the street so yeah, we used to spend a lot of time at the. In fact, I got I cut my head open. I went up um, one of the fake stairways. Like there's all these there's all these doors that lead to nowhere and stairways that staircases that lead to nowhere. I ran up one of these short fake staircases and I hit my head on a pipe, and wow. I cut my head open. Wow! <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Thank you. Dennis. Dennis, I'm so glad you brought that up. You are so welcome. Um, if you guys send us an email 
um, the odds are at one point or another, um, you will receive a link to the American Numismatic Association's minting process video. They have a wonderful YouTube channel, so I hope you guys will all go check it out. They have a great learning academy, and they have two of the best, um, in my opinion, on, on YouTube, two of the best um, minting process videos. One of them is like two and a half hours long. It's really detailed. So you guys should check it out. And on that note, if you're not members of the American Numismatic Association, what are you waiting for? You should be. You it's our national club. Then you ain't cool. And Koneka. You should also be members of Koneka. If you like errors and varieties, consider joining. It's like 25 bucks a year. And you get a really cool, um, you get six six issues of their error scope magazine which is phenomenal cool very sweet Except when they talk about a richmond dime by accident by accident <laughs> then, then we might have problems Oops. but uh, in, in other news we are what all what almost to the day two months away from our uh from our tulsa show we are exciting very exciting i can't wait for that very exciting yeah we will have three tables set up there sean Woo. we're gonna have three tables set up there so if you guys have coins that you want us to look at or questions um they are going to have a meet and greet area just for the youtubers where you can um pull your favorite youtuber aside and just chit chat a little bit with them so um yeah it's gonna be fun nice it's gonna be so much fun we had a blast last year and the year before well done. yeah it was fun well, finally getting to see everybody can... and somebody else will be there this year amanda will be there live and in person you can come and talk to her or maybe not talk to her but at least or wave. Just stare at her you may not <laughs> just stare at her because she may not answer you Bring a right. notebook. You could just pass notes back and forth. Yeah. It'll be amazing. <laughs> so anyway, um, I Wait. don't have any, any more news, any more coin news that I can think of. So Amanda, did you tell Angie about those <laughs> keychains? No, the Paula butthole, did. The butthole oh, keychain? Did. Yeah, those those nice ones. I was thinking, oh, oh, my God. Amanda has you all fooled. I'm telling you guys, she has felt these in the room. I haven't seen them yet. So Amanda sent me a link to somebody that makes custom made butthole keychains. I should have whispered that. <laughs> yeah. She, they look did you hear that correctly? Yeah, buttholes. I did. I said that. <laughs> so for those of you that think that coin people are just a bunch of stuffy old nerds, there you go. We're not. We're fun. We can be fun. I resent that remark. I know you resemble. That's <laughs> I, I resent that remark. I, I don't. Which one? It. The butthole remark or the? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. The, the coin nerd um, little whiff there. I like being a coin nerd. Yeah. I've always wanted to be in a club. Anyway, yeah, the only thing the only thing missing is a fancy A and A pocket protector. I know. I need to get me one of those though. So on that note, um, let's look hey, at some coins, shall we? Hey Paul, I have an extra one of these. Uh no, hold on. A red book. Yeah, I have an extra one. Red book. They sent me an extra. I should get I don't know. Should I give it away? I don't yeah. need it. I have two now. Yeah. What year is it? It's the brand new one. It just came out. Yeah, give it away. Everybody needs a red book. Yeah, twenty twenty. That'd be amazing. Sure. Yeah, because I got I got two. They sent me an extra one, I guess. Nice. Very cool. All right. On with the show. Welcome, Welcome to the live coin Q&A.
for Monday, April 8th, 2024. Eclipse day. And look at we're all still here. Adam, this is a long one. Be careful. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Dident, question mark. <laughs> So I'm going to give a little background to this coin. Um, this is a new viewer of ours, hopefully a new fan. Tony. Um, he sent me pictures of this coin, and I'm not a nickel person, you guys. I am just not. Um, but I try. I, I like to think that I can pick out like a dive variety when I see one. This one has is a little bit of a head scratcher. I really want it to be. Um, I really want it to be a little, a little class eight, class nine, um, double die. He thought it might be a die dent or a little die gouge. Um, it just doesn't have that shape. It just doesn't have that look to it to me. Um, and it kind of looks like the, like it might be part of like that, the bottom of the pillars or the steps. Agreed. It looks like it could be. Yeah, it, it's, it, I think that this is one that is worth submitting. It's little, it's a, it's a little, it's a little tick. Um, it's a little fly poop in the pepper. But, but there are he has found two of them, you said, right? Yes, he has two of them, identical. Mm -hmm. So it's something to do with the die. Oh, well, yeah, it's on the die. It's something on the die. Um, and he says, look, it's Paul's favorite. No, it's not. But I am, I do like, a, ask Eric. I know, is Eric, Eric, are you in here? I should have sent Eric. Um, Eric has found some new some new discoveries on, on the nickels. Um, it's definitely kind of a head scratcher to me. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a nickel person, but this one has, it, like I said, it doesn't have the typical like die dent or, or gouge look to me. And there are several of them that have some doubling down in those bottom areas. Yeah. So. And little minor things, right? Little tight. So I suggested to him that he send it to Brian. Why not? Right? Yeah. It doesn't hurt. That's um, right. Have the expert of experts, right? Look and he'll it. have it in hand. You know, can look at the entire coin and, and stuff. So. And I do think I have to like do any kind of overlay to see if it might be a little clash, but I don't think it is. I didn't see any any other areas on the coin. Yeah, if it was that strong there, there would probably be. It a would be more. somewhere else, you would think. Yeah. Right. You'd think. It looks like a Nike. It does look like a swoosh, right? It kind of does look like a little Nike swoosh. Just do it. I don't think it. Like mint marks, but. What's that? No, I said just do it. Just do it. Just do it. But it's cool. It gets, you know, I, I do like, you guys all know, I like things that are like mysterious and take a little bit of critical thinking. And um, so I think this is going to be one of those through a process of elimination. We'll figure it out. Awesome smile. Um, is it this or that from Nick? Hey, Sean and Q&A crew, thanks for all that you do. I've got a 1978 Lincoln Memorial sent here. Strike through or deteriorated die strike. Thanks again. Very cool. Well, I answered and I said, totally looks like struck through a bunch of grease. Sure does. There's also some circulation wear on there, but I don't, there's not really a lot of what looks like dye deterioration on it. Mm -mm. But that's pretty sweet. 
That's the good. Yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of die cloggage. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the de we scent. It is de we de we de we the live de we live de we. That's right. Live de we. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's a cool one. These are the fun little things that you guys can find. You know, um, they they get you keep you looking for more for sure. And this is a, this is this is a, you know falls in the more extreme category. Is the top of his head is really weak, and but that's a cool one. You find that one coin where all the drop fillings had fallen on. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? It'd be like the alphabet, it would look like alphabet soup strike through. <laughs> That, that would be, be awesome. amazing. Would be <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay, 1988D Flare G from Arvel E. Hello, Amanda and Amanda's assistants. <laughs> so I found this coin a while back, but I have been hesitant to anything with it to do anything with it. I guess because of the plating blisters all over it. I figured I would ask your opinions on it on if it is worth spending my time or money on. Thanks for the info. It's not, and you should immediately send it to me. <laughs> Just because. Just because, that's right. It is not a pretty coin, that is for sure. Hey, Hawk. But. Does it have a uh, any kind of uh, counter stamp? <laughs> Just kidding. No. Right. But <laughs> nice. There's your money shot. <clears throat> That's definitely flared. That is definitely the flared G. And it's better than the one I own because I don't own one. Right? Yeah. Uh, so plating blisters, especially on certain years, 88's one of them, um, is so common that I don't think for the most part, unless there's like a ton of like um, ruptured plating blisters or zinc rot, I don't think that they really take that into account when they're grading it, you know? Yeah. It would go, I think, more towards eye appeal, but if somebody who is grading it that thinks that they're really cool looking, then I guess, you know. <laughs> I like this one. Pretty variety. awesome. And that one's not yeah. worn down or anything. Well, we've talked about this one uh, quite quite a few times here in the last what month or so, right? Like, to, yeah. Well, Adam had two of them counter mm -hmm. stamped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that people are starting to um, look for this. I think for a long time because they called it a wide AM, it was just confusing for people. Mm -hmm. So they would find one. They would find an eighty-eight with a white AM. They go, "Oh, look! I found a white AM." And people are like, "All eighty-eights are white AMs." So they would just toss them, you know, and go, "Well, that must be a lie." <laughs> but since they've corrected their nomenclature, yeah. Where's Papa Giorgio? Yeah, this is a cool one. And if you guys have any questions when we're looking, I think this is, might be our last one, but when, normally when we're looking for coins, if you have questions about a coin that we're looking at that you want more explanation, feel free to ask the question in the chat. Um, tag us, put at live coin Q &A, so we see it. Um, 1972 Lincoln Poor Man's Double Die from Stray. Hi guys, it's been a while since I had a reason to submit anything. But I think this coin is worthy of your efforts. I apologize in advance for taking the picks in the two by two, but I just can't make myself bust it out as it's part of this coin story. I came across this coin in a situation where I was unable to get a close look at it and had to make a quick decision. Having never heard of a poor man's double die on the 1970 <clears throat> Lincoln, I decided for $4, I would take a chance. Imagine my surprise when I put this under the scope. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this to be the FS-103. I would like the panel's thoughts. Thank you all for everything you do. 
Pretty coin. Man's double die. <laughs> that's funny. I wouldn't take it out of this either. I think that that's, that story is great. Oh, my grandson. My grandson. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. That is nice. That is a true double die for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So did we determine, is it the 103? Oh, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> when I, I looked know. it, it looked like it to me. Okay, well, if Amanda says it is, then it is. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, it is in, it is in nice shape for sure. Um, and to clear, just to clear, clarify for you guys who might be wondering, what the heck is a poor man's double die? Um, you see them, uh, it, that term became famous with the 1955 um, for people that couldn't afford a fifth, the truth, you know, the FS 101, the true the, uh, major 1955 double die. Um, well, that's 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 the one that that most people identify it with is the 55 Joey. And it's just the last five in the date has kind of like a doubled look to it. And all it is is dye wear. It's just dye deterioration. So technically you could find that on any coin, on any date, on any coin. Um, all it is is 89 is a good example. 89s have a lot of that the nine where you see that that where the metal has kind of flowed off of the nine. Let me let me see if I can pull up a picture for you guys. Um, you guys can talk about finding that. Yeah, fifty three was another common date for the poor man's. Mm -hmm. What we call it on that last digit, the three. And I have people, Amanda did a video on it, and she clearly stated my problem with it. Um, I hate the term. I hate the term doubled used for anything other than a doubled die. Um, you see it a lot used when people are referring to die deterioration doubling. I actually ran across a circumstance where someone was told they had die deterioration doubling, and they thought it was actually a true, a double die. So they sold it as a double die. Um, so when you use the term doubling, you have to be very careful because it can be confusing to people. Um, so here's what it looks like. You see that second five? That five has worn down on the die. Um, worn down so much that the metal has started to it has nowhere to go so it follows the path of least resistance usually towards the rim and so it just has <coughs> flowed off of that five and given it like a second five appearance so that's all that is now if you were a rich person you could get the <laughs> the real 1955 well, you don't have to be a rich person. Well, no, I say no. this all the time. Right. If you guys have, so the 55 double die is very affordable. Um, in low to AU um, grades. Um, it starts getting more expensive when you get up into mint state, but it's still affordable. I see people all the time spending 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks here and there on different things. If you really want something, make a bucket list and put money aside and save up for it. I have a 1955 and I love it. I saved up for it for a long time and I was picky on the one I wanted. Um, but I saved up for it. So if you have coins that you really want, just save up for them. Good suggestion. I know it's tough because you probably you always see something that you want, but. Yeah, and sometimes you have to choose one thing over the other. 
Mm -hmm. Decide what you want to buy first. <laughs> Go after yeah. that later. Or yeah. just what, what, what you, what you, you um, oh sorry, Adam. No, go ahead. Now I was gonna say what you should do. Yeah, and I'm not telling people how to uh how to collect in this hobby because I, I'd like to say there's really no wrong way to collect. Correct. But try try and try and gain ownership of some some coins that, that add the the equity to your collection, <laughs> you know. It doesn't have to be a 55 double to die, but you know, um, you know, but buy some stuff that's meaningful stuff that, you know, on a rainy day when you need the extra money, you can easily take that coin and sell it and, and have a nice fair pot of money to use for emergencies and things like that. You know, the hobby in itself is just another way to store money, but how you do it and how you approach it is, you know, something that. You know, probably has some merit to it. True. Oh, thanks, Nikki. Dennis said he wants the 1870 CC silver dollar. That's a good one. Say, so, yeah, save it. Put put a put hundred dollars in a bucket every month, and you'd be surprised that how quickly you know, you get there. And trading is another good option. Kelly Kaiser yeah. said try trading. Trading is also sure. another good option, especially if you have silver or, yeah. you know. You know, um, I bought a nickel that was, what is my, nickel struck on a scent planchet mm -hmm. from my LCS, and I traded them silver for it because mm -hmm. they, they didn't have enough people that wanted, you know, something like that. But they have people all the time wanting silver and, you know, yeah. intrinsic stuff like that. So, a lot of times. Coin shows are a great place to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Coin shows, yep. So, bring all your stuff to, to Tulsa. <laughs> I'll bring but, all my silver. <laughs> but be patient. You know, if you if you really, like my next, I really want a an Isabella quarter. That's like my next bucket list coin. But I have a specific grade and a specific look that I want. And the look that I want is very, I want a blast white Isabella in like a AU55 or 58. 58's my favorite grade because it's affordable and it's typically a very a problem free coin. Um, but I want, a bl I want a blast white one. Isabella quarters are hard to find in blast white that haven't been dipped or cleaned because they tone. Um, yeah. I think it was because of the, so my understanding is that they melted a lot of the obsolete silver coinage to make those coins at that time. So I think it has something to do with the, the silver that they used to, to mint those. Um, but they toned and a lot of times they tone beautifully like you you can find beautiful rainbow toned isabella quarters i'm just not a tone person i don't like i want mine blast white um so but but that's the thing is is if you are going to save you know for a while to to buy a specific coin be picky about you know weights don't buy the first one that you come across. Buy one that you're gonna love and you're gonna want to look at all the time. And like this one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, just buy one that 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 you love because they're not one of a kind. You know, we're not. None of us are. We're not buying Stellas. Everybody's <laughs> asking about that, Chris. I do need to start that back up, but I am so. Your toner Tuesday. I am so busy. Somebody on Facebook does Toner Tuesday now. Who? Um, I don't know. Some Facebook group. <laughs> Eric Beyer. Eric Beyer, did you happen to see that nickel that we showed earlier? <clears throat> I really want your opinion on it. If not, Even though I probably will still suggest that they send it off. But. Well... Um, this coin sold for $84,000. Oh my God. Dollars. 
That's the one Rick was. That's the one Rick was talking about with more. Yes, with so Charles if Morgan. nobody's watched it yet, go to Coin Week with Charles Morgan. Yes. We did an interview with Rick Tamasca on Franklin Half Dollars, and it was pretty interesting. Rick Tabasco. Yep. So. Yeah, it, it was a really, really good interview. To, hey, you guys, that's another channel you guys should be subscribed to. Um, Coin Week. Charles Morgan is yeah. um, really nice guy, um, and and that channel is super informative. He does he has a lot of great interviews with people on that channel. Um, he's lacking. He doesn't have the live coin Q and A yet, but uh, you know we'll forgive him. We're for working. Now. We're working on that. We're working on it. Um, crispy, I sent you a message earlier. Maybe you didn't see it. So I'm not sure what happened with that, but I don't have a 1980 in a registry with NGC. So I'm not sure why they're saying it's, uh, in my registry. Cause I don't have one. So, um, I might have to call NGC and see about fixing that. I'm not sure what to do. Any update on the Henning nickel glide? Yes. Um, it should be out soon. That's all I can tell you. I've been sworn to secrecy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But yes, it'll be out soon, and and it's it will be well worth it. Trust oh, me. Oh, get you a henny nickel before it comes out. Right. Right. It will be well worth it. Trust me. Yes. <laughs> Hey, Todd, that is a great question. We get that question a lot, um, not only here, but, you know, on Facebook. I get it quite a bit also in my comments on a lot of my videos. Um, you have to take into consideration the 1909 Lincoln Center is first year produced with Lincoln. Um, they made a couple different variations of it. There's one without a VDB on the reverse, there's one with one, there's an S mint, there's, you know, VDB versions of those as well. Uh, but what it really comes down to is you, you, you have to know what you want to kind of ultimately achieve with it. Do you want to grade it to sell it? If that's the case, use just as price guide value at the very least. I'm not a fan of price guides period but you know know how much a coin is worth and what it looks like at specific grades pcgs has a great photo grade kind of uh, resource you know that you can mm -hmm. use to determine where your car well, your coin falls in line grade wise you know you open up pcgs's price guide and you look at the prices and based off of what your coin looks like because the coin with full lines on the wheat stocks can be as low as vf so a VF-1909 might show up as being worth $8 on there. Mm -hmm. Is it really worth your time to do that? You know, a lot of people don't do that kind of preliminary research work uh, when they're trying to figure out whether or not they should grade a coin or not. That, that's part of it. And that's that's all stuff that everyone in, in chat can do on their own, you know, because the resource is there. Uh, you, you don't you don't need us to look for it for you. That can get a little redundant. Um, but those price guide values are out there. Auction archive information is out there. Um, but ultimately, know you know know what you're spending your hard earned money on. You know before you go and decide to do it because it looks neat in an encapsulated holder. You know neat doesn't it, it doesn't equal you know money at the end of the day and that's that's something that we try and foster that kind of education and let people know slow down that that you know the the hobby is 90 percent educational start you know start you know opening books start going online they look look uh, answers because they are out there yeah I always tell people, I always tell people, if you have to ask if a coin should be graded, the answer is no, because you really need to be able to grade your coin with a fair amount of accuracy before you start spending money. We've seen people, all of us on the panel have seen people spend good money after good money after good money and just on, on grading coins that 
should never have been graded and it can be a really expensive lesson. Um, and, and most coins are, I mean, really most coins when it boils down to it are not worth grading. Yeah. Um, it, you may have full weed sauce. Like you may have a coin that's just, you know, beautiful on one side and trashed on the other side. You could have a coin that looks great to you, but it's, it has, it's been cleaned. These are or the rim is damaged. Or the rim is damaged. That's, yeah. always, that's part of the grade too. See, a lot of people don't know that. They don't look into the consideration of the rim, and mm -hmm. that could affect the grade. So learn, look, go, go. If you have a coin <laughs> shop, go to the, your coin shop. Most coin dealers love it when you when they get people in there that will ask them questions and that will, you know, that want to learn. Um, tr see if they'll let you look at the graded coins and just look at a lot of graded coins. Um, yeah, most coins need to be in real high mid state condition to be worth the cost of grading. So, two issues. Yeah, Joey. Joey. Uh, yeah, I remember him. The one that thought he had a sixty four SMS set. Oh well, we and you know somebody must have done a video on that because we have had. That's been a very popular topic in the last week or so. Well, that one did sell on Great Collections this past weekend, but that was well, a an example. So. But that that goes, we get those like periodically. That sixty four SMS comes up. Somebody has done a video. Coins are rosy or something. Did you guys see that? That now listen. I'm mentioning them. Please don't subscribe to their channel. It's the it's horrendous garbage they were they actually did a live two of them they went live and it was nothing but an ai thing talking nonsense not one thing in their entire two-hour live stream was true or accurate or i mean it was just garbage uh yeah i think they just uh wrote together a bunch of their videos and yeah, just put them in a thing. Yeah, Probably. I think that's what they did. But uh, do you know if there's any more of the Henning Nickel books still available? Because Eunice is possibly interested. Yes, in yes, Eunice. And we also will have four. In fact, I need to get, I need to shoot Joe a message. Um, we will have four that we'll be giving away too. But yes, he still has, he still has some available. So if you guys are not um, members of Joe Cronin's Facebook group, that's the best place for you to um, pick one up or shoot him a message. Um, I think I posted his yeah. email. Let me see if I can find his email. Yeah, um, the AI is beginning to dominate a lot of things online, uh, whether it's content creation. And you guys need to know that that a lot of that stuff a lot of that stuff exists wholly so that way they can make money mm -hmm. off of recycled content mm -hmm. they, they do uh, you're not you're not going to get any any reciprocation communication wise from these uh from these people because like, all they're doing is they're they're cranking and banking all of the of the videos um they're, they're not really putting any of the work in there so Unfortunately, oh, yeah. this is this is kind of like that wave of the future that that I don't personally like, and I'm I'm not going to indulge in the AI, even if it makes my life easier. It takes the emotional human element out of it. Um, yeah, it's also uh, they have a lot of misinformation, so um, you got to be very very careful with what um, they're telling you. So here is Joe's email. Um, if you guys want to, um, yeah, and they all have the same voices. <laughs> That's what kills me. Well, and the information is just—I mean, it's it's hit or miss. Like I don't trust it. I just well, don't trust yeah. it. And not even that, but but you you know when it's when the computer is reading words, it doesn't even use the right word i mean it'll you know it's like does some things phonetically it seems like and you know reads a date as money or number or you know like <laughs> one thousand nine yeah, they, nine. And they use a voice that is exactly like snoop dogs I mean, yeah 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they have five five on the cheek. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Down. It's supposed to be intelligent, but but the powers that be that actually run Chat GPT and all these other AI sites, they're still they, they still have human uh, interaction. You know whether they, that's upkeeping the uh, the the client or you know the the coding and all that stuff. So you know, it's garbage. A um, ten million Captain, bicentennial quarter. Oh my god! What, Captain Kirk? So is that so? Your question? Um, no, it's not a fake coin. Filled D mint marks are very common. Yeah. Um, there, there's a little post mm -hmm. on that mint mark punch in the middle that that often breaks or wears down on that mint mark punch. Um, so One of the common common coins with that filled mid mark, aside from the bicentennial, are the Susan B. Anthony's. Yeah, like the Denver, yeah. Philadelphia, so they're terrible for them. Um, and you always you always see them on eBay, like, oh, I got this this filled mid mark rarity, uh, Susan B. Anthony, and they're asking like two grand for it. So, yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, that's the race said hi to you. Oh, did I miss? I'm sorry. What's that? Yeah, he said Ray? hi. He said hi, gorgeous. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> gorgeous, George. That's why I'm just not used to it. You know, I have yeah. some fans and some yeah. that aren't. So. If you ever have a question, um, you can certainly shoot us an That's email nice. with good, clear photos. Nice, Adam. And um, hello, Tiffany. That's what we do, man. That's what we do. So those are thirty-two thousand run. <laughs> thirty-two thousand. I don't know what that means. Very, very low, very low Ooh, run. Yeah, like, a low print run. That's like one of the lowest. Rare. Like, very lowest. rare. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Rare or scarce. Rare. It's actually rare. Rare scarce. It says rare. Squares. 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 <laughs> yeah, we uh, we have a Facebook group too, you guys. Coin Q and A. Um, we have some pretty amazing people in our group, um, besides ourselves, of course. But um. We have some some great experts in our group that we are very fortunate to have access to. Um, so when you guys send us an email, you can be pretty pretty. It's pretty safe to say that we're you're going to get accurate information. It's very important to all of us. Um, that's one of the reasons why this whole group was started because that was lacking on YouTube. So we wanted to give collectors a safe place where they felt pretty confident that they were going to get the right answers. Um, and we don't just randomly, like, we don't guess. When you guys send us an email, if we have any question at all about it, we seek out help to get verification. Um, we've had a lot of people with brand new discoveries. Uh, so... I know. Yeah, we've been really fortunate. We've had some great, we've been able to feature some great coins. But, and we've had people in, people in our chat who started out brand spanking new that are now out there finding amazing coins and right. teaching other people. Like, we've watched the, their growth and it's been, it's, that's the best thing to me, I think is watching people start out brand spanking new and and then next thing you know we're featuring their amazing discovery coins and they're out there making videos and teaching people so 
Hello, Riley. By the way, early on, Indigon had a question and said, anybody have a connection to Rick Tamaska? How is his proof coinage book? Um, you, you can probably bet that it's accurate. He, uh, um, he was discussing that on the interview with yeah. Charles. So Yeah. Um, okay. If if Charles endorses it, then it then it's probably a pretty good book. Um, that interview is really great. You guys should watch it. Yeah, it was. We, it was. We also, huh? It was excellent. It was good. Yeah, it, it is really great. And and I'm still uh, a lot of a lot of people give crap to Rick Rick Tamaska because you know he did the whole you know TV huckster thing and rightfully yeah, so. But kind of stuff. He he knows his stuff. He you know, he's, stuff. He, he's been the, the, the top heavy guy of, of Franklin Half Dollars since the dawn of man. And the, the guy really knows his stuff. So, he yeah. He does. He knows, nice ton about, he knows a ton about yeah, right? the mission <laughs> process. Like, I mean, he, he really does. You know, you can, I, I have my feelings about all that TV sales crap but you know when uh and here when today we have this bank. beautiful package of we a dollar we're gonna sell it to you for a hundred dollars that's right well you know if i i suppose he probably um they they paid for his name i imagine probably. i imagine he made a good money on his name and his reputation so I remember the, 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 the network had a little bit of input regarding some of the coins that he sold. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that he was 100% in love with every pitch and promotion he did, but you know, when, when it comes to, to this right here, you know, grease in the palm, uh, yeah. you, you know, it, every, everybody sells out, you know, well, not me yet. I I'm, not endorsed or solicited or anything. Not, not yet. Well, I'm, I will I'm never sell out. Or a cover girl <laughs> or someone like that to reach out to me and say, hey, we want you. And I'm going to be like, okay, what do I need to do? So, I don't know. I know. <laughs> yeah, Adam, I Adam's Adam's uh, like, what? You didn't buy one of the ancient vault boxes, did you? I don't think you did, did you? What's that? The ancient vault box? No. Oh, what no. about the new, what about the new, uh, the PCGS Ultra, what, Ultra Breaks of garbage. Yeah, I, I I don't do any of that stuff. I, well, I don't do yeah. any Ultra Breaks or, or that. Um, Vault Box, I'll kind of pick and choose the one that I like. I don't do Ancients, so yeah. that was a hard pass. I even told Blake, the owner of the company, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing Ancients. That's not my thing, but, you know, yeah, um, yeah he they, they ended up selling out of the thing. So they, they should have reached make, out to Christian and had him promote promote that one. Right. Yeah, he, he may not want to do that. You know, um it, Christian kind of has more morals, you know, about yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't think that would be Christian's bag, baby. No, it, it's not. It, no. it wouldn't be. Yeah. He, he knows he has, his, he has his stuff, though, We had right? him on. Yeah. We had him on a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's a good kid. Um yeah, so so Michael Kittle and Joey both said that uh, his Kennedy Franklin book is amazing, the older one. And Michael said he has that book and it's pretty good. So um, yes, there's a, there is you. That's right, Michael Kittle. Big difference between making money on selling coins and ripping people off. That is you absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. So Todd's asking uh, suggestions on ways to get good lighting for taking photos of your coins. Practice. So you're using a pla plastic cup with a flashlight to diffuse the light. I know there's various different yeah. ways. Light yeah, bombs. practice. Practice yeah. whatever works best for you. Usually, um, I know people. A lot of people like to use a couple of light sources from you know two sides that. Um, yeah, or light boxes or 
light boxes, no, yeah. Shine it off of the wall so it's a reflect, the light's reflecting down. That's what Sean does. But it's not directional onto the coin. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a big reason why that people have trouble imaging proof points mm -hmm. because of high reflectivity. But it, it, yeah, experimentation. Unfortunately, we're we're moving in a direction where LED lighting is is going to be taking over everything and good old standard incandescent bulbs, which I like for the natural lighting. You know, they're they're doing away with that because of the efficiency of the things. So yeah, it's 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 all you know. It, better yet, if you could take photos with natural. Comes natural light you know, yeah. that, yeah. that's that's the ticket Go outside right on the picnic so. table and take photos of your phone yeah are you yep. trying to tell me that when i buy the light bulbs that say they're daylight that that's not <laughs> natural light <laughs> it's not the same thing no, and shannon bulb. don't be going into the tanning bed and taking photos that way okay <laughs> well you come mean the coins because <laughs> come on <laughs> all right <clears throat> anyway yep yep okay yeah 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 that's right michael uh set your white balance correctly uh so that way the photo is not drowned out you know um hey your your camera could do some of the heavy lifting so you use the features that that these state-of-the-art cameras even on smartphones can can do you know that don't get fancy with it let the camera do all the fancy work hmm. says, um, no. coin hunter yes yeah. I, I saw that coin um i actually posted that on um are you talking about comic comic hunter? Oh, comic hunter yes comic hunter I yeah that I've seen that because I posted that in in Ken's group for you. Um, uh, uh, you read it, Tommy Chunter. Well, so I, I'm I'm gonna disagree with Wiles just because Wiles called it a heavy die clash. It's a pretty typical die clash. It is it is in multiple bays so maybe that's why he called it um a heavy die clash on the reverse from for me to consider it a heavy die clash i would have i would have wanted to see lincoln's bust outlined um i would have wanted to see part of liberty in the bay and maybe part of the date up above the memorial that to me is a heavy die clash yeah it was a decent clash i wouldn't have i wouldn't have called it a heavy die clash but i suppose it, no it is a beautiful die clash it is cool i can show it um let me pull up a picture of it and a huge prison on the obverse and to me it was unusual for wiles to even look at that coin I wasn't aware he was doing. Yeah, die that, clashes. That's pretty mad die clashes job, right? Yeah, um, I wasn't aware that that was he was doing that, but. Uh, well, is he listing them somewhere? He's not listing. No, them. he's not listing them. He just so, I mean, said. He just said, "Yeah, this is a die clash." Oh yeah, I'm nice going too. So you can see it. I mean, there is the why. You do see the why there. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I mean, it's a it's a pretty typical die clash. So, and it's got that little die crack, which is really common for this year. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool. Something cool for you have in your collection for sure what if they had a really hard die clash with that 83 double die reverse so you could see like part of it on the obverse yeah i think that would probably if, if if that was out there it probably would have already been known i, I know, know i'm just saying that wouldn't that be cool it would be it? really cool yeah in the of course, yeah, of course 
<laughs> and congratulations. You know, it's always cool. He got a letter. Dr. Wiles sent him a nice little letter. He got a letter, so it's always cool to have that. Um, but get, get, get that puppy framed. We, we don't know how much longer Dr. Wiles is going to continue to do some of his work. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I got some of those uh, letters in the gun. Two minor to list. Two minor to list. Two yeah. minor to list. Better luck next time. <laughs> right. Here's the way I take it, though. Two minor to list does not mean it is not. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just true. means he doesn't want to put it up on the website. <laughs> but it's like getting a participation trophy. Yeah. Well, don't we all love that? Yeah, <laughs> you participated. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it, and it kills me though. I think we've talked about it before, but you know, coins from ten years ago—they were putting hundreds of small, you know, so minor double dies, and now they just, you know, are they going away from that? I mean, it's the same thing. So this is what Dr. Wiles said on that coin. Heavy die class shows on the reverse in base 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. The reverse is a late die state, while the obverse is an early die state, which does not show the die clash. So apparently, the clash was discovered, and the obverse die changed, but the reverse die was deemed good enough to continue minting coins. Um, there is a die crack from the lower right building to the rim, there is not enough information to determine if it occurred before or after the obverse die change. So there you go. So obviously the U.S. Mint um, didn't think it was, you know, horrible enough that that they needed to remove it and even abrade it away, which that kind of surprises me. And maybe they did. Maybe maybe they did. Maybe the die was just too far gone and they thought it wasn't worth it. But typically with die classes like that, they they will remove them and try to remove the die class. Yeah. You do, CJ. Yeah, Connect mm -hmm. needs to have their own website now they do that they've attributed you know they're working on that so yeah. they, they had they had some of their files up they pulled them down i think there might have been some errors or something but they're working on it it's a work in progress it's slow going because they don't have a lot of people working on it right so they need volunteers right so yeah. if anybody's good with that kind of stuff maybe Talk to him. Yeah, well. He couldn't explain how he acknowledged the DDO. You I know, see was saying, come with the naked eyes and still too minor to life. So, yeah, I don't know. Indigo, and I hope that you resubmitted it to somebody else. Well, that's what I did. I usually sent yeah. a, a Wexler. If Wilds didn't agree. Or I guess his them. attributions are on hold again too. I think that what's happening there is they're they're uh, cleaning up the site. I think they're cleaning up his website. I think Eric told me that they're cleaning up his website before they accept any more submissions. Well, that's good. Oh, good, Indigon. He said it's on. Yeah. Good. But uh, I'm echoing. You're echoing. Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, I, I think I've I've graded almost. I probably have forty graded um, discovery pieces. Oh yeah. Let me set that up, Joey. Thanks for reminding us. Oh yeah, the red book. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Should we do no, Joey's just here for the red book. He's just here for the giveaways, we know. He's just here for the giveaway red book. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure why they mailed me people? another one. They just mailed it in the I was like, I already got one at the show. Donna gave me one and then they mailed me a new nice. one. Nice. You know you should talk to her. She needs to send us a, you know, every once in a while something like that to do a giveaway. Right. To say right. Donna. <laughs> um 
if you guys are new to our channel too um and you're here just for the giveaway probably not the best channel for you to be although we do do great giveaways now and again especially our christmas, during christmas our christmas giveaways are amazing so let's just do red book how about that how about that how about that, how about that? But hey, KJ, you can always send us an email on that, buddy, uh, with any photos that you have so we can take a look at it. it it's not uh, it's not unusual to come across an underweight planchet. It had been tapered or, you know, something to that effect. Okay. Yeah, we can't tell you without seeing photos for sure. So Todd wants to know if there's a market for coins that show very obvious die polishing marks, and would that be a mint error? So sure. no, wouldn't be um, a mint error, right? But it's well, a well, so people collect things like that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not an error. Um, it was done on purpose. It's just ma die maintenance. However, if you look at the three-legged buffalo the two feather buffalo, things like that, those are all over braided dyes. Well, and I'm um, wondering if the question is more along the lines of, because sometimes, you know, you can see those like streaks where they have yeah, sure. polished it off or whatever. And, right. you know, sometimes it's really heavy. I think people, you know, some people collect those kinds of things. Yeah, there could be a mark. There could be a little mark. I mean, so it... Here's, the, here's my question to you. Here's what you have to ask yourself. Is there a market for it priced at $100? Probably not. Is there a market for it priced at a dollar or 50 cents? Sure. <laughs> right. You know? No FG Kennedys, yeah. Yeah, the no, yeah, some, yeah, the no FGs. Um, Floating roof. Let's that, is not, that is not, we don't talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that here, you know. Um, you know, you guys, like, like Sean said earlier, it's, this is, it's your hobby, it's your collection. You get to collect however or whatever you like. That is um, just be smart about it. <laughs> Social media. Yeah. <laughs> Detached leg bison nickel. Yeah. You gotta love it. You gotta, you gotta love it, it, even if the market does not love it. That's right. Chris says I have one with no neck. Isn't there a floating head? Uh, uh, yeah, like, like, like it's there. Yeah. 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 There, there's even the. Um, the formative years with, with Lincoln sitting on the log, there's a uh, overpolished die version of that where he's like sitting on nothing. Nice. Uh, yeah. That'd be cool. And those things are cool. I mean, you know, they're. they're you, you have to you have to consider the amount of people that that have interest in that. It's going to be yeah. a lot less than say someone who who just casually collects Lincoln sets by date. You know, right? Um, it's it's night and day. It's a it's a very niche type of thing. It is, and a lot of a lot of errors or things like that um, are dependent on interest. Like, is it something that a lot of people think is cool or interested in, or um, the the and how and how how um, common is it so the floating roofs when they first people first started finding them back in the you know late 60s early 70s were really popular because they pretty much were only finding them on like 69ds over time they have realized how common it is like they are super common um, on multiple dates so they've lost their, you know, really any value to them. 
Okay. Yes, yeah, so rare, rare, rarity and grades still apply, by the way. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I found this anomaly. You want to share my you screen? Share. Yeah, those are heavy dye polishing lines. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about next to the B there. Oh, I can't. Is it raised? Yes. So we have a little dye, we have a little dye break there. Yeah, it's it was like really. I was like, God, that is crazy. Something else was on that coin too because they tried to polish it away. There probably was a really heavy dye clash. Well, it was a clash because it's a Bugs Bunny yeah. clash. Oh, well, there you go. And there you go. Is that one of the new ones listed? Yeah, it's a 53S. Yep. Nice. And I just submitted 10 of them to NGC. They all came back with the Bugs Bunny clash. They haven't finished grading them yet. But... Cool. You selling those? Yep. I don't figured... be on my whatnot, Shannon. That means you need to show up. Well, you better tell me what night you're going to be doing them. <laughs> well, I've been right, selling them. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck everybody. Luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. If you win, please shoot us an email with your YouTube name and your real name with your shipping information. Beach Beach side. Side. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. And why yeah. did I see my name? I didn't type that in. Maybe, yeah, maybe you did, Shannon. Maybe you don't have to put it by itself. Maybe it's just anywhere in the sentence. Wow. Yeah, it is. You can put it anywhere oh, in the sentence. Oh, so maybe okay. you said something about a red book. Yeah. Okay, you can I put it anywhere in the sentence. I was telling as my coin turns to put it just as by itself because I didn't. Uh -uh. You can but put it anywhere. Cool. Mm hmm um each side if you could please send the email info at livecoinqa.com with your address. I, feel like, I feel like beach side has won before with your address and i will mail it to you and please send it within 72 hours yeah <laughs> so 72 business hours 72 business hours not days <laughs> <laughs> not 72 days <laughs> well, my second roll of 88s did not have an FS. No, no. Crack no. it open or leave it. So um, he said he found a 59D in a PCGS MS64 full bell lines, and he found out that it has an RPM. Should I crack it open or leave it? The minor RPM, I would leave it. It's not a cherry picker listed variety. There you go. Oh, Beachside won an A and A membership. Nice. All right. Oh, nice. and speaking of that, he was um, vaguely familiar. Yeah, we did find out that um, before we thought that um, our gifted memberships, and I think they were in the beginning, um, were for new members only, but they have opened it up to now where you can wow. renew. You can use it to renew your membership. So that's a good thing. I like that. That's very cool. I did not know that. Did and I'm gonna something? talk, I'm gonna talk to Jim Motley this week. Um, hopefully this week, and see if I can talk him into giving us some Koneka memberships. Um, Donna, say something in the email or something. I don't, or did somebody else? No, Dirty Water. I think it was Dirty Water that used. Oh, okay. Um, wasn't it you, Dirty Water, that you used a membership? Might have been Joey, one? too, because I know it you. It might have been somebody. I remember somebody saying that they. You registered his today, it says. It says. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. All right. We well. Need, uh, um, are we going to have any giveaways at Tulsa? Are we going to do any yeah, special, sure. special stuff? Um, probably. We probably will do. Um, I Hopefully. We're going to bring that uh, suit, Shannon. No. Well, I was going to bring a, I was gonna bring a couple of the uh, Henning Nickel books. Um, so maybe we'll do like one. 
I don't know. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. It, it, we have not, the last two years that we've been there, we have not live streamed a lot. Hopefully this year will be different. Yeah, well, if I can keep Adam behind the table and Shannon now, behind the table for, for long enough. Well, I have a lot of friends out there, but but what I was going to say is, you know, when, the next time when somebody's walking around, they're probably not going to show very many coins. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and great deals that are out there. <clears throat> Just saying. Yeah. Amanda's going to beat us to the punch. She's going to be the one cherry picking all the tables. I'm telling you right now. She's oh, Amanda will. Amanda will be. Amanda will be killing it. For sure. I never leave the table because I'm like, I usually sell a few things and then I want to keep, I want to hoard my money. Keep her money, yeah. I do. So. Captain Kirk, thanks for coming. We Looks like it was Eunice. She renewed her membership. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I saw that. Good. Awesome. I have only had two memberships before this one. Nice, Eunice. Awesome. Yeah, you guys really should consider joining Kaneka and the ANA. Um, Especially the ANA is, I mean, I love Koneka. And if you are an error variety collector, that is the, that is the club for you, the group for you. But anyway, well, awesome. um, I'm hungry. It's dinner time. Right. I think we've been going long enough. Good show. Well, let's bid Thank adieu. You. Thanks for coming, everybody, and um, any of you people lurking in the background. Thanks for coming and hanging out, and I hope that uh, I know one person that I hope that we have um, changed your opinion. Wink, wink. Thanks, Doug. Hey, thank you, Doug. Yeah, yeah. you too, Eric. Eric, when is your next? Um, when's your next role reveal? Did, did you do one today? He probably did do one today. I, I think, think he, he did. did one today. I need to go uh, in there and hang out when he does one of those. Hey, yeah. Ant, um, there's a couple die markers that you can check for the Master Hub uh, doubling. So there's a little, if, if it's not a worn example, you can see a little mark inside the S of trust. That's one of the key markers for Master Hub doubling. Um, the B in Liberty, yeah. the I uh, um, in, and N of N have, they look like the, on top of them are like little skinny, little toothpicks like, um, yeah. And the two, but yeah, cool. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Eunice. Perfect. Nice. All right, you guys. Well, have a great week, everybody. And um, Sean, tell Stacy that I, she's on my mind all the time. And my, I'm just a phone call away. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Have a great week and be safe and uh, find some good stuff and send us send us some good stuff in the email. All right. See ya. See you guys later. See